Hello everyone. Last class we discussed about the torque slip characteristics. In the torque slip characteristics, we have a relation between the torque and speed is like this. The relation is so if you draw the curve between the torque as well as slip. So torque in y axis and slip in the x axis. Then waveform will follow like this. So it will reach the maximum point by the linear mode and after that it will it will become the non-linear mode. This is the point. This is the point. So if this is the for example, this is the maximum torque. This is the maximum torque. If any if you consider this torque, for example, this is the torque A. So if you consider the torque A, this torque A is possible at the two slips. This is the slip one and this is the slip two. And these slips, this slip in the x-axis slip is from 0 to s and speed is from ns to nr. Speed is from ns to nr and at this condition we have nr1 and at this condition we have the nr2. So for the same torque the two slips are possible and two currents are possible. Uh, sorry, two speeds are possible. At that condition what we should take into the consideration. So we already discussed this region up to the linear region. This region is called as the stable region. This region is called as the stable region. And after the linear region, this region is known as the unstable region or nonlinear region. So for this particular torque A, for the particular torque A, the S1 slip 1 at the slip 1 we are getting the NR1 speed. It is you should consider why you should consider because it is in stable mode or linear mode. And for the torque A, we have slip 2 and that will produce NR2. It should not consider because it is unstable mode or non-linear mode non-linear mode so this is the important so for the particular torque in the linear region we are getting some slip and speed in the non-linear region also we are getting some slip and speed we should consider only the linear mode of slip and speed next here Next important thing is family of torque slip characteristics with different rotor resistances with different rotor resistances. For example, we have the rotor for the particular rotor resistance R1. This is for rotor resistance R1 and this is for rotor resistance R2. This is for rotor resistance and R3. Why it is varying like this? why it is very like this because if you take the maximum torque what is the formula for the maximum torque generally you should consider the maximum torque the, the maximum torque formula directly you know that k into e2 naught square by r2 k into e2 naught square by r2 that means um, e2 naught square not r2 sorry 2x2 here this meaning just observe here for example if we are increasing for example if we are increasing that means the relation between r1 resistance and r2 resistance and r3 resistance these all are the rotor resistances these all are the rotor resistances just assume it just assume it so for this condition if you observe here for any case the maximum torque of the induction motor doesn't depends on the rotor resistance R2. It depends on the K, it depends on the E2 naught, it depends on the X2. That's why for any rotor resistance the maximum torque will be maximum torque will be same. 
the maximum torque will be same so that's why it will reach here it will reach here it will reach here but why this is we can consider as slip at torque maximum 1 this is slip at torque maximum 2 this is slip at torque maximum 3 but slip for the different different uh, slip for different rotor resistance the slip value is increases why it is increases so here why it is increases I will write here because slip at torque maximum will be depends on the R2 by X2 naught that means slip at torque maximum will be proportional to the R2 that means by increasing the rotor resistance slip at torque maximum will be increases that's why for R1 it is low value for R2 it is high value for R3 it is high value that means by increasing the rotor resistance slip at torque maximum will also be increases that's why for R1 resistance it is less that's why the curve is like this so for R2 resistance maximum torque is same but slip at torque maximum will be high for this third case here also the rotor resistance will be torque maximum will be same but slip at torque maximum will be high slip at torque maximum will be high so for different rotor resistances for different rotor resistances the torque maximum will be constant but slip at torque maximum will be increases with increase in the resistance with increase in the resistance so we will discuss some points here those are with increase in rotor resistance the width of the stable operating region increases just observe here here for this first region the stable operating region is this region and for second case the stable operating region will be increases for third case the stable operating region will be increases stable operating region means this point to this point for this R1 resistance for R2 this is the stable operating region next the operating point moves away from the synchronous speed as a result machines performance decreases so look at here here the machine synchronous generally for slip equal to zero the speed will be synchronous speed and when it move on to this move on to whenever the slip equal to one for example we have some slip equal to one at this point the speed will become the zero here the if for example if you consider this for this particular torque just look at the operating point this operating point is related to some synchronous speed nearer to synchronous speed for this operating point related to some decrease in synchronous speed for this operating point it will be again decreases to this speed so the synchronous speed will be every time decreases every time decreases the speed will be every time decreases so we can write like this that is nr1 is high nr2 is less and nr3 is more or less nr1 that means rotor speed 1 increases more than 2 more than 3 so that's why the operating point moves away from the synchronous speed the machine's performance is decreases next by increasing the rotor resistance the copper losses increases here the most important thing is the copper losses will be increases just look at here why copper losses increases resistance increases means what is the formula for the copper loss copper loss is i square r loss then this value is increases so this is the problem with this next to maintain the performance of the motor resistance should be taken as as small as possible so for that reason we need to for this reason to maintain the performance of the motor so for the motor performance r should be small as possible r should be better to take r should be small as possible 
as possible. So, by increasing the rotor resistance is not a better thing because by increasing the rotor resistance, the copper losses will be increases. So that's why better to make it R should be small as small as possible. Okay. So this is about the family of the torque slip characteristics with different rotor resistances with different rotor resistance. Only simple thing when the slip when the rotor resistance will be increases linear stable region will be increases and the slip at torque maximum will be the same and uh, the linear uh, next the speed of the rotor will be decreases the operating point moves away from the synchronous speed moves away from the synchronous speed mm, next uh, so but, but but there is a disadvantage by the by increasing the rotor resistance the disadvantage is, is simply it will copper losses will be increases so the machine's performance will be decreases okay this is about the torque slip characteristics of different rotor resistance i hope all of you understand this session thank you